Put one finger up in the air. One finger, one finger, one finger. Everybody all over the room. One, 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 one. Say this with me. If you're watching us at home, put one finger up in your living room. <laughs> one finger up in your bedroom. Woo, I feel the anointing. Come on, put it up, put it up. Shh. Woo. Come on, put it up, put it up. Say this with me. Say, as one. Say it again. Say, as one. One body. One God. One Father. One community. One vision. As one. Now lift up a shout. It takes all types. It takes all types. We're one body, but we're not supposed to act the same. We're one body, and we're not supposed to look the same. We're one body, we're not supposed to dress the same. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I like tattoos. You don't like tattoos. Okay. Don't get none. While I get some, leave me alone. I like earrings. You don't like earrings. I like jewelry. You don't like, you don't like Jordans. You think LeBron's is Jordans. I'm, it's, it's not your fault. You like flip-flops. I don't wear no flip-flops. Huh? I'm talking about the ones with the little thing in the middle. I ain't talking about like slides. I'm talking about the ones with the little thing in the middle. It's all right. Not ladies. I'm talking about guys. I'm That's all right. I'm me, you, you. I said, I'm me, you, you. Look at somebody tell them, say, I'm me, and you, you. Say, I'll be me, you be you. But that don't mean we're not one. Put the one up again, put the one up again. Come on, man. And I'm telling you this because I want to let you know something. Real soon, real soon. It's going to be a whole lot of people up in here that don't look like you, that don't dress like you, that don't act like you. But what's this? You don't dress like them and you don't act like them. I'm telling you, it's going to be such a wide variety of individuals in this house. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. You ain't going to, wait a minute now, who? I ain't, who was these people? That, 15 of them just walked in. Who was all them people? You know why? Because each one of us, guess what we're getting an understanding is as we go, God is going to start bringing people into our, him, uh, our, our sphere of influence. And he's going to start bringing people up to you to talk to you, to ask you questions. And you're going to be like, what? what is going on? Because as you begin to receive revelation and the light bulb begins to go on, you begin to shine differently. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You ever seen like that, that uh, light come on? In your backyard here in South Florida, you know good and well. You turn the light on in your backyard, what happened? All the bugs in the backyard. Bzzz, they come. Why? Because of the light. The Bible says the world is groping around in darkness. And they're looking for the light. And God is making you the light because you are supposed to shine in a place that nobody else is supposed to shine in. It's people that's going to be drawn to your light that is not going to be drawn to somebody else's light. And so right now, you may be looking at yourself and going, man, ain't, no, ain't a whole lot of people like me right now. Well, that's because, guess what? God brought you here so that you can start shining the light to more people that look like you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many know that lawyers hang out with other lawyers? Doctors hang out with other doctors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Scientists will hang out with scientists. They talk the same language. So God is doing something in this season. He is revealing himself to other individuals in different sectors so that those individuals can shine the light in their sphere of influence. Amen. How many are ready to be the light? Come on, for real, for real, for real. Come on, don't clap and raise your hand if you're not ready. I said, don't clap and raise your hand if you ain't ready. Huh? <laughs> How many been in a fight growing up? You've been in a fight, one or two fights growing up. One or, one or two fights. I'm not glorifying violence. I just want to know if you have been in one. Just raise your hand. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Just stop lying. If you've been in a fight, raise your hand. Come on. Okay. How many been in a fight by themselves? 
How many been in a fight where other people was helping you? Come on now. See, y'all was jumping people. Y'all wrong. I'm deep. Y'all love. <laughs> Come on, you been in a fight with somebody else. Come on now. And then you ask the person, you, you ready? And then the person you ask if they ready, all of a sudden, it feel like you fighting by yourself. Go <laughs> You ready, dog? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm telling you, I'm ready. I'm telling you, boy. Let them boys act crazy. We, it's on. And then you turn around. You're like, hold on, man. It's, where my boy at? He gone. Man, I was in a fight one time. And these dudes jumped me, right? But I, didn't, I had nothing to do with the situation. But you know how you feel something ain't right? And so I was... We, was, we were at the club, and I left the club, and I'm at the gas station. And all of a sudden, I look around. I'm like, something ain't right. I said, bro, let's leave. Dude I was with, no, 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 don't worry about that, man. Don't worry about that. We sit down in the car, and the car was my daddy's car. It was the pastor's car, y'all. I didn't take it. Somebody else took the pastor's car. And I was in the club and I saw this individual with the pastor's car. My daddy car. I said, hey man, what you doing with my daddy car? He said, your daddy went out of town. He left it at my house, so I used it. I said, boy, you don't get my daddy car back to the house. So I got in the car with him to make sure that the pastor's car was going home. Amen. So we're in the car, and all of a sudden, I start feeling this feeling like something was wrong. And man, before I knew it, I said, let's leave. Somebody had bashed out the pastor's front window. Oh! <laughs> all of a sudden, I see 20, 30 dudes coming from all over the place. But something rose up big inside of me. <laughs> It's my daddy car. Ah! I got out the car. They snatched my homeboy out the car and went to beating on him, beating him up, right? And I look around. There was some other people with me. All of a sudden, them people was gone. He was by myself. How many know? When you look around and the odds are just unsurmountable. You cannot win this battle by yourself. And you look around and there's nobody around. How many know that is a sinking feeling? Come on, I'm for real. Let's, let's be for real for a minute. So what I'm saying is, is if you are in this battle, this fight that God has called us to fight together, and you are not locked shield to shield with the brother and sisters of the, this community of believers. And you look around at the, at the battle and you look at it's raging and you're dealing with cert certain circumstances and situations that you cannot win on your own. And you look around and in this room, we are talking about we're ready to fight. But when you look around, you ain't got nobody. How many know that ain't the kingdom at all? Put your hand up again as one. Look around. Shield to shield. I said shield to shield. Huh? If my shield ain't up, guess what? I'm susceptible not only to be defeated by my, to, for, for myself, but I'm also allowing the attack to get in and get behind the front lines. Somebody say as one. Say it again. Say as one. Now this time we're going to say as one and we're going to do the 300. Oh, are you ready? As one, as one, again, as one. Come on and give God a hand clap. <laughs> one by himself can be defeated, but two together standing back to back can be victorious and can conquer. The Bible says that one can put a thousand to flight. In other words, one can defeat 1,000 individuals. How many know that's, that's pretty good? One of y'all going to beat a thousand? I don't been there, you know. <laughs> One can beat a thousand, but two can be 10,000? We talked about it two weeks ago. Understanding that we are warriors. 
How many know a lot of people can be a soldier? Anyone can enlist. Matter of fact, there are, there's a whole lot of reasons why people enlist. I want to enlist because I want to go to college. They're going to pay for my education. I'm going to enlist because there's a trade I want to learn in the Army or the armed forces, and they'll teach me that. But I don't necessarily want to fight. Come on, somebody. So I enlisted, and I'm a soldier, but that don't make me a warrior. And in this army, let me tell you, we don't need no soldiers. We need warriors. No, I don't think you're hearing me this morning. We need warriors. There's a difference. See, soldiers got fire insurance. Some soldiers, you ain't had no other choice. Either it was death or the army. Come on, somebody. You know those dudes that was going to go to jail, but they decided I ain't going to go to jail. I'm just going to go to the army instead. I didn't really enlist to fight. I didn't really enlist because I was passionate about the cause. I really didn't enlist because I had an understanding that I, because of my particular skill set, that I would be a good soldier, that I'd be a first class soldier. I didn't look at it like that. I just figured, is this a death? And see, some of us have got into this army of the Lord just because we don't want to go to hell. But in this season, God is calling for good soldiers. First class soldiers. God is calling for warriors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where the true warriors at? Where they at? Where they at? Let me stop. <laughs> Praise God. That's what I want to talk to you about today, being a first-class soldier, being a true soldier. It's a continuation from what we talked about two weeks ago, amen? Remember, can we give it up for my brother Goody that came up here fully dressed? Come on, man. We, we ain't give it up for him, right? That man had a whole Roman soldier outfit on. Can you give it up for him again? There he is. There he is. Coming down the aisle right on time. First class soldier, amen? Matter of fact, let's go to the word of God. Well, firstly, let's start where we left off last week or where we started last week. It was 1 Peter 5 and 8. And the word of God tells us to stay alert. Be on alert at all times. In other words, don't fall asleep. Keep your wits about you. Have an understanding that at any time you may be called to fight. Look at somebody and say, stay alert. Stay alert. Look at the person on the other side and say, stay alert. Stay alert. You, how are you going to stay alert and you falling asleep already? <laughs> Shake them, say, stay alert. stay alert. Wake up up in here. Stay alert. Your family needs you. Stay alert. Your children need you. Stay alert. This community of believers, they need you. Watch out, it says. Your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone that he may devour. Looking for someone that gives him a foothold. Looking for someone who does not have up their shield so he can get behind the lines. And, 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 and you know, that it takes the, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It ain't got to be a big attack. It can just be a little fox. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All you need is a little dagger. It can still stab you. It ain't got to be a big attack. Small attacks. And do you know that's how, that's how it, you can defeat an army is if you wage small attacks on all fronts at the same time. Anybody been feeling like that recently? It ain't really nothing to really talk about. It's just a little something here, a little something there, a little something here, a little something there. And all of a sudden, you just feel debilitated. You're like, what's wrong with me, man? I just feel like ain't even a big deal, but I got this going on with my kids. I got this going on with my finances. I got this going on with my, with my grandmama and them. I got this going on with my cousins and them. I got this going on at the job. Man, it's just too much. Stay alert. He's prowling around. 
looking for you to make the mistake of saying something that does not agree with what God is saying. And so these little attacks that come, they come to beat at you consistently. And before you know it, you have said something that agrees with the accuser. Watch this. Simple. Real small. You know what? She make me sick. Got him. Oh, so I have the right to make you sick. You shall have whatsoever you want. Say now in your mind, you're not really thinking of being sick, but what you spoke out of your mouth is that this individual is aggravating you to the point of sickness. Oh, it's just a saying. Well, say something else. Come on. It's just a saying. Why is it just a saying? Why do we say crazy stuff like that? You don't want to be sick, but you're going to say they make you sick. It's just a saying. Well, why don't we say something else? Say it, say stay alert. Ninth verse says, stand firm against him and be strong in faith. Remember that your family, your actual blood family, and your community of believers family all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. In other words, your suffering is not, you know, limited to yourself. We're all going through this, amen? The Bible even talks about that Jesus went through the same things that we went through. And the reality is, how many know that he overcame? If he overcame, I can overcome. Come on, there are other people dealing with even far worse than you, and they still fighting through. You heard me say this before. Somebody say this with me. Say, it's bad, but it ain't cross bad. Huh? It might be bad, but how many know it ain't a spike through your feet, spike in both your hands, Spear in your side might be bad, but it ain't that bad. Say it again. Say it's bad, but it ain't cross bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And Jesus still said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Come on, right now, just close your eyes and just say that collectively all over the room. Say, Father, forgive them. Say, forgive me. We know not what we do. Give God a hand clap for that. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 says, we wage, we, excuse me, we're going to read in the, the New Living Translation. It says, we are human. Raise your hand if you're a human. All y'all, unless there's some aliens in here. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use, this, this is very important for us to hear this morning, okay? Please don't mentally assent to this. It says, we're human. But we don't wage war as regular humans do. That lets us know that we, as humans, we wage war. Matter of fact, it's almost like humans love war. <laughs> We're always fighting something. Come on. But we don't fight our battles or our war like regular humans do. Goes on to say that we use God's mighty weapons. We use whose weapons? God. Whose weapons are they? God. We use whose weapons? God. Okay, we use God's mighty weapons. So God has weapons. Does God have weapons? Does God have weapons? Okay, you're supposed to wage war, but you're supposed to wage war with whose weapons? God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. And we use those mighty weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. In other words, I'm a human, but I knock down my human reasoning. The way that I think as a human being, the way that society has dictated that we're supposed to think, I knock down that human reasoning and that, and that societal way of thinking with God's mighty weapons. Now, if that was not a stronghold, if it wasn't a place that was fortified and strong, then I could use my own weapons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I could just use my weapons and beat it up. No, 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 no. You need 
God's mighty weapons to tear down these strongholds of human reasoning and the way that we think in society and how the enemy has infiltrated in society and done everything to formulate the way we think based upon what society says is right. You need God's weapons. Look at somebody and tell them, say, you need God's weapons. Because you can't fight them on your own. You need God's weapons. It says it's destroy the, the knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. To destroy anything that would come against the truth about who God is and what he desires for us. One of those false arguments that we'll start talking about in our next series is religion. I said one of those false arguments is religion. Religion pretends to know what God wants and what he's all about, but in actuality, it takes human reasoning and it puts uh, limitations and rules and regulations in order for you to feel like you got to jump through every single hoop to get to a God that is closer than your own breath. Somebody say, that's a stronghold. And the only way to knock down that stronghold is to use God's mighty Weapons, my God. We destroy, not beat up a little bit, not punch him in the face, not give it a break, not lift the stress of. It says destroy. That means utterly obliterate. Make it so that it cannot happen again. Destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people. From knowing God. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I don't know if we understand how deep this word is. We need to use God's mighty weapons to destroy those obstacles that keep people from knowing God. There's something in the world that is set up purposefully to keep people from knowing the character and understanding the true nature of God. And the enemy uses everything. And one of his tactics is religion. Keeps people from knowing the one and true God and his nature. The only way to destroy that is with God's mighty weapons. We capture rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient will punish every thought that remains disobedient. After you become obedient. In order for us to utilize these mighty weapons, you got to be obedient. You got to obey God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Somebody say, if. Somebody say, if. In other words... This is how I'll know that you love me. How? When you do what I tell you to do. Master, master, master. Jesus said, why you keep calling me master, but you don't do what I tell you to do? If I'm your master, you're going to obey what I direct you to do. How many want to obey God? Come on. How many are true disciples of Jesus? If we are disciples of Jesus, the greatest apostle to ever live, then we have to do what he directs us to do. Amen. 2 Corinthians, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 10. And let's read it in the Message Bible, 10 and 3. It says this, we're humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strong. Uh oh, that's the same. I'm sorry. That's the New Living Translation. The message says it, says it like this. The world is unprincipled. It is dog eat dog out there. The world don't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles the way that we don't fight our battles that way and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. In other words, the world uses marketing tactics and manipulation 
to get people to do what they want them to do. That's how society works. Come on. To get you to, be, to walk in fear, guess what? Every news channel you turn on be saying the same thing. Good morning. You're going to die today. Just want to let you know that. We'll see you at 12. Good afternoon. You're going to die today. And if you don't, it's possible you'll die tomorrow. Have a good day. Good morning. Everything is horrible, and we're here to let you know it. Hope to see you at 7. Hey, it's 7. The whole world is going to hell in a handbasket, and we're here to report the news. We'll see you at 11 o'clock. Come on, somebody. Manipulation constantly bombarding you. If I don't get COVID, I'm going to get shot. If I don't get shot, I'm going to lose my job. If I don't lose my job, the gas prices is going to cause me to lose my job. <laughs> Come on. I mean, just constantly. Constantly. I know gas prices is high, but guess what? Stop buying all that Starbucks. I bet you can pay for some gas. It was three. Now it's five. You losing your mind. It's two dollars. Two whole dollars. Good God. How am I going to buy these shoes this weekend? How many know you're going to make it? I said, you're going to make it. Say, I'm going to make it. Start talking to the gas prices. You're going down in Jesus' name. You're going down. Down. You at the pump. I tell about I bind you up in Jesus' name. I command you to decrease. <laughs> Hallelujah. The tools of our trade. They're not for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing the entire massive corrupt culture. Put that scripture on the, on the, on the screen in the message. We don't use manipulation and marketing, but the tools, God's mighty weapons that he gives us is for demolishing this corrupt culture. Man, y'all should be losing y'all minds. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's a corrupt culture, man. It's here to keep you down. That's the whole plan. I ain't talking about the man. I'm talking about the devil. It's corrupt. It's designed to keep you down. So it is my duty to understand how to use God's weapons. Oh, man. I don't think y'all hearing me this morning. Huh? If I know how to use God's weapons, I will demolish this corrupt culture. Everything that's pressing on me, I'm going to press back on it. If I know how to use God's mighty weapons. Hear me this morning. In other words, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of stronghold. When you talk about warfare, it ought, the synonym to warfare is warcraft. And to understand warcraft, what I'm saying is, is that I have a extreme knowledge and expertise in proficiency in order to use the weapons that have been given to me. When something pop up, guess what? I know which weapon to grab, and I know how to use it. Oh. Where are my true warriors at this morning? I said, where's some real? I'm talking about some real, some real warriors. What blow my mind is let somebody step on your shoe, you'll be ready to fight. I'll tell you what I got in the glove part right now. I got something in the glove for you, boy. Step on my shoe. He ain't even say sorry. I know how to handle you. But then the devil just slapping you all upside your head. You just taking everything. Let somebody run into your car. You ready to lose your mind. But the devil been stealing from you since you've been a little baby. And you ain't doing nothing to him. The joker bumped my car. You know how much I paid for this car? Car. It's a car. I need my car. Huh? Your car? That's more important than your life? Oh, I know what's wrong with you. You've been messed up by this corrupt culture. And you ready to take somebody's life about your car? 
Dude, the other day I saw it on, in, uh, on the internet. They bumped his car. The dude jumped out the car, did not waste no time. Pop, 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 pop. Five shots into the window of the man's car because he bumped his car? I will take life because of a, a car? Corrupt culture. He's been manipulated. Now he's sitting in a cell somewhere thinking to himself, why in the world? Why did I do this? Now the enemy has stolen, killed, and destroyed. The individual is gone, and now your life is destroyed. Why? Because you believe the manipulation. Oh, oh, some <laughs> Y'all listening going, oh, my God, that's so horrible. Them. I can't believe they did it. Some of y'all right in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> we use, fifth verse, we use God's powerful tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. <laughs> wow, that's powerful. I take all my thoughts, all my emotions, everything that will cause me to act stupid and crazy, I put it all in the funnel of Jesus Christ, and if it don't fit in that funnel, it's not for me. Your attitude don't fit in that funnel. I say your pride don't fit in that funnel. What you want to do compared to what God wants you to do, it don't fit in that funnel. Mm. Your opinion about other people, if it does not line up to what God is saying, it don't fit in that Christ funnel. And so you got to make a decision that you're going to throw all of that away and live for Jesus. How many have that desire? Come on, come on. Come on, lift up your voice today. Give him praise right there. Just lose your mind. Right there. Man. I got to go on. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm in a fight, Amen. And so if I'm in a fight, I have to understand that I'm fighting for the king. I'm a soldier in the army, and the army that I'm in belongs to the king. Amen? I am in, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. But I'm not just a soldier. God is asking me to be a warrior. Warriors love to fight. Now, they don't just love to fight for the sake of fighting. A true warrior, a warrior of the kingdom of God, is a warrior and understands that his gifts, his talents to wage war, and his understanding of the, 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 the weapons of his warfare and the proficiency and the time that he spent to know how to handle the weapons of his warfare, he realizes and understands that the battle is not just for him. He's fighting a battle for somebody else. That's a true warrior. When he goes to war, he says, you know what? I'm going to go fight. I'm going to use the, my, my proficiency, but I'm going to fight this battle and help the less fortunate. Amen? He understands that the way, and do you know that a, a, a warrior in his true form, how many know it's a thing of art? I mean, for real. You ever seen someone that really know what they're doing, and you looking at him, you're like, this is amazing. Look at this joker. He, he done jumped up in the air, came down, did a twist, did a split, and then <laughs> defeated all enemies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many, how many have seen the, the movie 300? Come on, man. Stop playing with me. Y'all don't seen that movie. If you ain't seen it, you need to go watch it. Now, I'm going to show you something. And if there's some little kids in here, you close their eyes, but you need to see this. I understand what I'm saying? So as you're watching this, I want you to think about it in the realm of the spirit. Did you hear what I just said? As you think and watch this, I want you to think about it in the realm of the spirit. We said it before. Put your hand up again. As one. That is the sound of your enemy. Come on, turn it up. Hike it up. Hike it up. Turn it up. As one. Shield to shield. Hold. Weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Mighty to the pulling down of stronghold. Get ready to fight. Everything. No weapon form. No weapon form. Ah! 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 Ah
I won't get weary in well doing. Let's go. I will not be defeated. Let's go. In the face of what looks like insurmountable enemies, when I stand shield to shield with my brother and sister, I am a true warrior. And I'm in a unit and community of true warriors. As one. Come on, as one. Now let me hear the 300. Oh, as one. As one. As one. As one. Give God some praise. We will not be defeated. Shield to shield. Come on, say it. Say shield to shield. David says in Psalms, he says, he teaches my hands to war. Oh, man. Maybe I'm just too excited about this. The weapons of my warfare, they ain't carnal, man. And he teaches my hands to war. That means God himself sits down with me and teaches me to be proficient with these weapons. Mm. No, 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 son. Don't use it like that there. Turn it this way. You turn it this way, it cuts the air properly. And when it cut the air, it's going to hit your enemy in the right place. And he'll be obliterated. Come on, man. How many know when David picked up those five smooth stones and he picked up that, 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 that slingshot, he wasn't really using a slingshot. He was using God's weapons. The first thing he did was walk up to the Goliath and tell him, I'm going to kill you. I'm prophesying to you. Guess what? I defeated giants in private. I'm about to defeat this giant before everybody. Who do you think you are coming up against me? A child of God. You uncircumcised Philistine. You're going to die today. I dare you to try to talk lack to me. I dare you to try to talk sickness to me. I dare you to talk depression to me. I will not be defeated. Boop. Then I'm going to use your sword and cut off your own head. You can't have what they said you can have. You can't buy a house. Okay, I'm going to buy one and then use the same market and double up on you. Sell that house and get two. Oh. Use, the, use his own sword. Mm. Oh, this stuff is just too high. Okay. That's all right. I'm about to double up on you. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but God's going to do it for me. And I'm going to use your sword and cut off your head, Lack. Mm. Oh, oh, you want to plague me with generational Lack? Well, I'm about to double up and get generational wealth because I know how to use the weapons of my warfare. Oh, oh, everything went high. It's hard. It's like, no, no. Everything went high so I can make more profit. If the body of Christ knew how to use their weapons, when things go high, guess what? You'd be in the green. You'd be in the black. Oh, you ain't hearing me. See, if we was using our weapons properly, you would have bought all kind of property you could. Now, guess what? You'd be a multi-millionaire. But we were stuck in religion, stuck in tradition. Wasn't listening to God when he said, go buy that empty lot. What am I going to put on that? Go buy that property around the corner. I, I don't need that. What am I going to do with that? Now they just gave the dude that did buy it triple what it was worth. I'm waiting for a word. I'm just waiting. I don't I ain't heard God yet. <sighs> but you broke. You, you maybe you ain't listening right. 
Mm. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. True faith. How many know? <sighs> Hold tightly to the internal, eternal life to which God has called you. For which you have declared so well before many witnesses. Oh my God. 2 Timothy 2 and 3. It says, when the going get rough, message Bible. Take it on the chin with the rest of us. In other words, fight like a good soldier. Um. I don't know how to say it. I'm thinking of a different way, but I don't know how. Stop acting like a punk. Stop acting like a punk. You are a warrior. Huh? I don't teach. I hate when every time I come to church, she looking at me funny. What kind of warrior is you? Oh, soft, jelly back, worry about the wrong thing. What is your problem? You know, I did too much work. I did more than someone else, and I'm sick of it. What kind of warrior is you? People dying. And you done lowered your shield so you can whisper gossip to somebody. Oh, hold on, I can't talk with this thing in my hand. <laughs> you know what happened. What? <sighs> when the going gets rough, take it on the chin with the rest of us. Second Timothy 2 and 3, Message Bible. Just the way Jesus did. A soldier on duty doesn't get caught up in making deals at the marketplace. He concentrates on carrying out his orders. And an athlete who refuses to play by the rules will never get anywhere. It's the diligent farmer who gets to produce. He says, think that over. God will make it plain to you. <laughs> in other words, I ain't going to spend much time on this. In other words, if you don't want to be a warrior and understand how to use your weapons of your warfare, you know, go on then. In 300, there was a gentleman, a guy who wanted to fight with them, but he had a problem lifting up his shield. And so the dude said, you can fight with us, you know what I mean? But can you lift up your shield? And the dude said, I can't lift up my shield. He said, oh, no. <laughs> nah, bro. You can't fight with us. It ain't the fact that you can't fight. The fact is, if you can't lift up that shield, I understand that you might know how to fight, but you need to lift up the shield because what you're going to do is protect yourself and the other individuals with you. You got to have that shield up. Jesus. Ah. Ephesians 6 and 11. Now I'm just going to go rapid fire, okay? Rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire. You need to be writing these scriptures down. He says, Ephesians 6 and 11. He says, put on all God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as a helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, this 18th verse is not necessarily considered to be a part of the armor, but it's right after he's talking about the armor. So obviously it is a piece of the armor and a piece of the armor is says to Pray. Somebody say pray. pray. Say it again. Say pray. pray. In the spirit at all times, on every occasion, stay alert and persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Can you give God a praise for that? So the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. They're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And then he lists these weapons or lists God's armor. Now, I, I don't have time to go into this, but in Isaiah, 
Isaiah begins to prophesy about how the world is in an uproar and, and things are horrible and, and how justice is not even in our courts anymore and things are going insane. Anybody feel like Isaiah knew what he was talking about? Yeah. Kind of like now, right? It talks about people dying and, and all of this turmoil that is going on in society, in our world. And then it talks about God stepping up and seeing what is going on. And it says that God was surprised that nobody else stepped up. Since God himself was surprised, like, wait a minute, man, I got some warriors in, out here. How come ain't nobody else stepping up? And then God said, I'm going to step in myself. And he's prophesying of Jesus. He sends the, the Redeemer. He sends the Redeemer to us all. Jesus comes in, and guess what? It talks about him wearing armor. Oh. Whose armor is Jesus wearing? God's armor. Jesus has on God's armor. You are directed to wear whose armor? God's armor. And the, the same armor that God is telling us to wear in Ephesians is the same armor that Jesus is prophesied to have on in Isaiah. It says that Jesus, he's coming to deliver us and he's wearing the breastplate of righteousness. It says that Jesus is coming to deliver us and he has on the helmet of salvation. So wait a minute. This weaponry was fashioned by God. And he gave it to Jesus. And we know what Jesus did. And then he tells you to put on the same armor. Look at somebody and say, put on the armor. My, now, you do know it's not really armor. <laughs> but it's not really armor. And the fight that you're fighting it really ain't your fight. It's not real armor. It's like armor. So when you put on the whole armor, you become a warrior. But if you look at the expression of each piece of armor, each piece of armor is an expression of God's love. Oh, oh let me help you out. Salvation. John 3.16 tells me what? That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to do what? To save us all. Why did he do it? Because of his great love. Salvation is because of God's love for us. Then he tells us the, the, the breastplate of righteousness. Well, if I have an understanding that I'm loved by God and I understand that I am his son or his daughter, I am in right standing with my good father. Then the belt of truth, what is the truth? That God is a good God and that he loves me. The truth is that I'm his son, I'm his daughter. That's the truth. Now, if I don't understand that truth, then I don't understand the totality of the word. It starts with that truth that I am a son and that my father put everything on the line for me. Somebody say that's true. So that's the truth of what? God's love for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Then it says, use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, the word of God, that Bible is, is, is it's a love letter to me. It is filled with promises and decrees to show how much God loves me. It tells the story of the greatest act of love ever known to mankind. It tells the story of Jesus. And then Jesus himself is the manifestation of the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. And we know that Jesus is the manifestation of the love of the father. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Then it talks about the shoes of peace. The shoes of peace is what? The good news. What's the good news? Telling people about how much God loves them. Then it talks about the shield of faith. Well, the word of God tells me that faith worketh by, by love. Then it says this to me. It says, if I say I have faith, but I don't do nothing, my faith is what? Dead. So faith itself is the outward workings of love. And then it gives you an example. Let's say you find somebody who ain't got no clothes on and you tell that person, I have faith. Well, what does faith look like to somebody who don't got on no clothes? What does love look like to a homeless person? 
It looked like you acting like you believe what you say you believe and acting in love to that individual. So all of those shields and armors and everything that's listed there, it is all about the outward workings of the love of God. When it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, all of those are fruits of the love of God. God is love. Hang out with God, you'll act like him. And then every day you wake up, you'll be able to put on God's armor and be able to wield the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. How are you going to pull down the stronghold in somebody's life who don't want nothing to do with your God? Love. Remember, they're God's weapons, and God is love. So what kind of weapons do you think he used? Not manipulation. Huh? Not religion. Not control. Love. And when you learn how to wield love properly, guess what? You will not be defeated. Come on up. Where my box at? What is, what, is, what is the sign to? Watch this. Four people. In their profession, each one of these individuals wear an apron. By looking at them, you have no idea what they do. How many already know what they do? These four people, you know what they do. Raise your hand if you already know. Stop lying. You ain't prosthetic. <laughs> Or you might be prosthetic, but you ain't prophetic. Four individuals. By looking at them, you have no idea what they do. But really quickly, soon, you're going to understand exactly, immediately. I'm going to show you something, and you'll understand exactly what each one of them do. Are you ready for this? Okay. Can you grab that for me, sir? And hold that in this hand. What is this, gentlemen? Immediately, just like that, you recognized him because what he has in his hand lets you know what he does. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And by his uh, 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 tools of his trade, he holds those tools. You know immediately what he does for a living. What does he do? What does he do? He's an artist. He's a painter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. What, what, what she do? What is she? Why? Because there's some weapons of her warfare, tools of her trade. When you put them in her hand, it's obvious what she does. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They, got, they all got on the same outfit, but it's the tools in their hand that specifies what they do. How many know it don't matter how long they had on this little smock right here, that don't make him a good artist. She's been a hairdresser for 25 years. She's still just as bad as the day she started. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't go to her. She'll scold you. You leave out there with patches. Just because she's been a hairdresser for 25 years and she learned and went to school to do that, it don't mean she's good at it. Mm. But if she learns the tools of her trade, especially in South Florida, she's going to be a millionaire. <laughs> huh? If he learns the tools of his trade, he'll have his own art gallery. Are you hearing what I'm saying? His job is to learn how to use the tools. Now, we don't know what those they do down there, do we? We ain't got no idea. Huh? Here you go. What, what, what does he do? What does he do? How many know just because he cooked, it don't make him a good one? He burned water. But if he learns how to use the tools of his trade, everybody going to want to eat what he got. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He got a food truck, restaurant. Come on, he opened it up on South Beach. His name Chef can do that. Hold 
What does she do for a living? She's a what? Now you know good and well. Just because she got a shop, that don't make her a good barber. How many been prey to a bad barber? The joker got a shop, a little sweet and everything. You walk in and you like, golly, you leave up out of there like, I ain't never going back to that dude. And all the men said, dang, man. But if she learns how to use those clippers, how many know she'll be named a good barber? Uh, 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 let me see here now. Who I got here? Let me see. Uh, uh, uh. Right there in the red sweater. Come on up here. Come on up here. Now, the Bible tells me we got to learn how to use the weapons of our warfare. Amen? Watch this. Who, who is she? Oh. Wait a minute. In her hands is love. The Bible tells me, Jesus said, they will know that you're my disciple. They will know that you're in my army. They will know that you have on the full armor of God. They'll know that you are a warrior. By how you use my love. If I'm a warrior in the army of the Lord and the weapons of my warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty to the full pulling down of strongholds. I got to learn how to use love. Watch this. In all its expression. See, we get all confused. Well, this and that. No, 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 no. Listen, the Bible is a book about love. Jesus is a manifestation of the Father's love. That's what it is. Why did he die on the cross? Love. Why did he raise again? What was he, why, on the third day did he rise again? Is because the power of the love of God. Why did he come back and teach his disciples? Why does Paul, why does John, why does Jane? All they talk about is the love of God. I'm going to read this scripture and we're done. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I believe it's 2 Colossians 3. What is the scripture? I'm going to get it. Hold on now. Yeah. Colossians 3 and 12. Col I said second Colossians. It's only one. It's all right. I'm almost perfect. Not, uh, not totally perfect. Second Colossians 3, I mean, <laughs> Colossians 3 and 12. It says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself in tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. It says, remember, the Lord forgave you. My God. You must forgive others. Listen. Above all else. What does above all else mean? Above every single thing. We talking about armor, but recognize what you're really clothing yourself with is love. It says above all else, clothe yourself with love. 
Love that binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule over your hearts. For as many members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Put your finger up again. As one. So watch this. We're going to do the 300 AU again. You ready? As one. You know what that cry is? It's the cry of love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, the Bible says that the violent take it by force. What's your force? I said, what's your force? Our king rules in what? Love. Kingdom. He dominates, but he dominates in? And you are a warrior in his army. Oh. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole love of God, and it will be like a shield to you. Put on the love of God in your family, and it will be like a shield to your children. Wear the love of God in your household, and it will be a shield to your marriage. And when those fiery darts come at you, guess what? They'll fall short. Why? Because of the love of God. When somebody bump your car... <laughs> Put on the whole armor, the love of God, because guess what? God forgave you. Are you going to forgive them? Oh, come on, somebody. See, when the love of God is the first and last thing in everything you do, you have the compassion of God in your heart, and you want to tell everybody about this loving God that you met that saved your life. You sang it this morning. He was up there, you have rescued my life. And then, but I'm finna kick your butt. But he has rescued my life. But if you try me again, I'm finna fight. Which, 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 which one is it? They will know you by your, they will know you by your, not by what you call yourself, not by what church you go to. Not by what car you drive, what neighborhood you live in. They going to know you by your. Come on and give God a hand clap. Thank you guys so much. Great job. Thank you. You can take that with you. <laughs> That's yours. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all can go ahead and take it off stage. Praise God. Give it up for them. Give it up for them. You'll be known by the weapons of your warfare. They're not carnal. But they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons, I don't care in what expression, it's the love of God. I said it's the love of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Can you stand to your feet in the presence of God? As we go, everywhere you go, Wear love as your all-purpose garment. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. It's not about your religion. It's not about your denomination. <clears throat> it's not about what you wear to church or don't wear to church. It's not about in what department you serve. It has nothing to do with anything else but showing the love of God. And when we have all made the decision to allow love to be the first and last thing in everything we do, guess what? We're standing shield to shield. We make allowances for each other. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At one point in that battle, one dude stabbed one dude, and then all of a sudden, four dudes had four spears in the same guy. Because they thought, wait a minute now, I know you didn't just try my homeboy like that. I know you're not gossiping about my sister. I know you're not gossiping about the leadership of this ministry. I know you're not speaking negatively about what God is doing in this season. I know that you're not speaking negatively about another brother or sister. We shield to shield as one. Say it with me again. Say as one. 
John 17 and 21, the Lord, I mean, Jesus is speaking to God and he tells him, he said, Father, make them. Father, make them. And he says, by that unity. And the only way we can be one is by love. By that unity, watch this, the whole world will know that you sent me. Mm. Could it be, and we talked about it before, could it be that the world is not known the true character and nature of Christ because his body has not put on the whole armor? Could it be that the world has not understood and seen the effects of of the power of God because his warriors won't put on the whole armor of God. Because his warriors won't stand and clothe themselves in his love. How many would make the decree today? Not me. Come on, not me, not no more. Just as a sign of surrender, just as lift our hands. Love is the unbeatable fighting style. When you love, you become Bruce Lee. Huh? You know, I love this saying. You hear me say it before. They ask Bruce. They say, Bruce, why you whoop everybody? Bruce, why you so good? What's your fighting style? Bruce said, my fighting style is the art of fighting without fighting. It's the art of fighting without actually fighting. All I'm going to do is wear love. All I'm going to do is wear love. And the battle doesn't, is not mine anymore. It's the Lord's. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm telling you, love will get you out of lack. I'm telling you, for real. Love will restore your marriage. Love will cause you to witness to people that don't look like you. Love will make allowances for people. Love will stop you from shopping so you can witness. Love will stop you from feeding your face at the restaurant to love on the, the, the waitress. Love will restore your relationship with your children. Mm. Lord, help me. I already did. Lord, help me and my children. How about you call them on the phone and love on them? Lord, please. Okay, did you take some time to love on this kid today? No, I didn't. Well, okay. Why don't you do that first and then. Right now, I want you to take a couple minutes and just cry out to God for yourself. Come on, open up your mouth. This word, if it, if it, if it hits you right where you live and you're ready to make a shift, come on, talk to God just by yourself. See, we're getting ready to take territory. And these things have to be shifted properly so we can be in alignment with what God is doing. Pastor, you always talking about love. Yes, because it's all about love. It's not a message. It's not a message. It's not a message. It's the nature of God. It's the character of God. And it's the only way we have any validity at all in this world. It's the only way that we have any power that we talk about. It's the only way that we see the kingdom of God come and the will of God be done. Only when we become a conduit for God's love. Hand in the middle of your chest and say this with me. Say, kingdom of God, come. Say it again. Say, kingdom of God, come. Say, will of God, be done in me, through me, in Jesus' name. Amen.